Hello everyone, me again. Um, the topic for today is a little bit more with this these future forms that you are new. Um, in the past you've seen future verbs, just regular future verbs, but this, these forms um, use, as I said in the last lesson, in a, um, a future participle, which is uh, basically the fourth principal part of a verb with some modifications made to it. And that's in a different video, but I'll, I'll do some examples for this one too. Um, and that future participle joined with a form of essay. Um, for example, um, I'll just pull an example of one here. If you look up the word dormire, no, 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 hold on. If you look up the word, let's just stick with pugnare to fight. If you look up pugnare in the in Whitaker's words or anywhere there's an online dictionary, a Latin dictionary, you'll see that the principal parts again are pugno, pugnare, pugnavi, pugnatus. This again is where you start here and this gets, I'm going to bring this down a little bit, and this gets modified into this. We insert a UR there. Pugnatoris, and this word pugnatoris means about to fight or going to fight, and then that is again joined with a form of essay like this, est, and here someone who is masculine is, is going to fight. So this would be basically the same thing as this pugnabo, if we remember the future verb for pugnare, the Bo bis bit bimus bitis bunt. So these are two ways to say the same thing. Pugnatoris est equals pugnabo. Each one is basically. Oh no, I'm sorry. I, I made a mistake. My bad. Let's let's change this to that. Okay. Pugnatoris est. He is going to fight. And this here, that T reflects that he or she ending there. So my my bad there. Pugnatoris est equals pugnabit. Um, so now. In today's, I'm going to get rid of this, what you're going to see is usually something like this. We're going to have indirect statements that use what is called the future infinitive. When you have the future participle joined to the actual infinitive essay, um, and again, this can change depending on this, but well, we'll get to it. I'll, I'll point it out when we get there. But most of the verb is the same, but this part here can change depending on who's doing the action in these indirect statements. But maybe you're asking, what is an indirect statement? And I'm going to give you some examples here. Um, what is an indirect statement? In Latin, it's called oratio obliqua. And if you read along with me here, uh, um, in general, the statement, he scatters dragon's teeth on the land is a direct statement, an oratio recta. Um, dentes draconis in terra spargit. Spargit means he scatters um, the teeth, dentes draconis in terra. So now when we have words, uh, uh, verbs of the head, verbs that express saying, denying, announcing, telling, showing, knowing, Believing, thinking, hearing, seeing, feeling, hoping, fearing, etc. All of these words that you can do with your head. You say things, you hear things, you know things, etc. Most of the example, most of what you're going to see today will be verbs just of saying, I believe. Julius will say that something will happen. So when you take that direct statement, he scatters dragon's teeth on the land, and you then have somebody reporting that fact. He says that he scatters dragon's teeth on the land. This is what is called an indirect statement. Now, for review, and we've seen these before in the past, but here we go. Formation. In English, indirect statements are introduced by subordinating conjunctions like that, which has no equivalent in classical Latin. Notice that we have, he says that, he scatters the teeth. Um, but Latin doesn't use a that here. Instead, it uses a subject accusative. That subject accusative here is going to be he, and also an infinitive. This will be the infinitive in Latin. So, 
Um, so an accusative and an infinitive. Accusativus et infinitivus. I think I've said it before. The subject of the old direct statement, he, up here, he, is made accusative, eum, and the verb scatters is put into its infinitive form, spargere, instead of spargit. So there are, so you're going to be using infinitives. So what is the future infinitive? This is, these are all forms of future infinitives here. As you see, uh, as I said last time, laudatoras, monitoras, ductoras, and auditoras are all future participles. When you combine them with the essay, this now becomes what is called a future infinitive. So that's the form you'll be focusing on today. But as you'll see, most of these will now be accusative because somebody is going to be doing something inside of an indirect statement and we're going to use that accusative also in the infinitive. All right. So let's take a look at the actual work that will be done today. Um, this is one of two exercises I'm going to post up tonight. Indirect statements that use future infinitives. We have some stuff going on here, and we're going to turn these um, direct statements into indirect statements. You have an example right here, which I've actually put into English down here. For example, Julia says, Marcus um, will, will also sleep in school tomorrow. Marcus slept in school today. Julius expressing no confidence in his son once again. Marcus will also sleep in school tomorrow, no matter what he said. So that's a direct statement. Cross, quoque, Marcos in ludo dormiet. This is the future verb here. But we're going to turn dormiet into its infinitive form. And we're going to take Marcus and make him accusative. So Julius says that Marcus will sleep or is going to sleep in school tomorrow also. I'm going to do the first one here. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do the, the sixth one because the verb fere is so unusual. It has weird principal parts, and you need to look up those principal parts in order to get these right. So here we go. In number six, Julia says, a slave will bring the letter to the teacher. So we want to take that direct statement and make it indirect now. So we will start with Julius. Julius Dikit. What does Julius say? He says that, and here comes the accusative subject. Servum, a slave. Ad magistrum stays the same as does the epistulam. And then what do we do with ferret? All right, I'm going to leave this capitalized for a second. If you look up ferro or ferre, F-E-R-R-E, -E, in Whitaker's words, here's what you're going to see. Ferro, ferre, tuli, latus. So this is an irregular verb, and that's why I chose it. So, so to remind you that you must start over here with this fourth principal part. Now, if you look back at the other videos, um, at the other video that I made about this, um, we're, you're, you're hopefully going to remember that latus is where we start, but we don't leave it there. We're going to turn it into laturus, and then we're going to put the essay on there. Now, there's one more thing that will have to happen here. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to plug it in for ferret now. Now there's one other thing that has to change, and that is because this slave, the subject of the indirect statement, the accusative subject of the indirect statement is, is accusative, because he is accusative, he is the subject of this infinitive too. And therefore, servum is going to trigger this to become laturum. So there you have number six. Now, for the second exercise, the only thing that's going to be a little different is that these people are all saying that they themselves are going to do something. For example, number, well, we'll use the example here. Marcus says, 
Never again will I fight in school. Pugna bo, that bo ending is I, and this is future tense. So I will never fight again. Oh no, not in school, in the street. I will never fight in the street again, he says. So Marcus, speaking about himself now, not about somebody else. If Marcus was saying that he, meaning another he, not meaning Marcus, but another one, then this would be eom. But Marcus is speaking about himself. So say, if you remember back to Julia looking at herself or seeing herself in the mirror, this this word say, this pronoun say, is used in an in a indirect statement when the subject is speaking about something that he or she or they themselves will do. Okay, so... Marcus says that he, meaning himself, never again will fight in the street. So say, whether you know it or not, whatever it looks like, is an accusative form itself. And therefore, once again, we have to have urum to reflect the fact that this he, meaning Marcus, is the one doing, who is, is the one who is not going to fight, who will not fight. So we draw the gender of this form from this guy here because he is speaking about himself. Again, if this was Marcus says that she will never fight in the street again, meaning his sister, let's say, this would be Marcus eam numquam itram in via pugnatur am esse because he's speaking about a feminine person. But here the he himself is Marcus. He is, he is masculine. And he has to be accusative here to match with this, or rather this verb form has to be accusative to match with this accusative subject. I hope that's clear. It is 12 minutes in now. Um, so with the other video that I posted, this is quite a bit. So again, I will um, leave it to you to, uh, to do the rest. Actually, I'll tell you what, I'll do one more. Davis says, I will close the door with a key, or I will lock the door with a key. So if we want to use the same, same example, well, same form as we did in the example above. Davos dikit se yanuam clave. And again, I'm going to put cloudam here. This means I will close. And if we look up Claudio to, to close or to lock, we're going to find this. Claudio, Claudere, Clausi, Clausus. And that we will now modify once again, not Clausus, but Clausurus. Include an essay now. So I'm going to bring this back over here and insert this in. Let me get rid of this stuff here. Davis says that he will close. So again, we have to keep this in this accusative like the say here. So we're going to say since Davis is masculine, he is again going to be clausurum, clausurum esse. Davis dikit se yanuam clave clausurum esse. Davos says that he is going to close the door with a key or lock the door with a key. Okay, that's now 14 minutes. I'm sorry to try your patience, but it is a fairly um, complicated um, sort of form. And also some of you didn't do so great on the last one. So I wanted to be absolutely clear here. Okay, hope you have a good day. Take care.